Welcome to the Data Visualization module. Data visualization is the presentation of data in a pictorial or graphical format. It allows decision makers to see analytics presented visually so they can grasp difficult concepts or identify new patterns. With interactive visualization, you can take the concept a step further by using technology to drill down into charts and graphs for more detail, interactively changing what data you see and how it is processed. So what are data? Data are a set of values of qualitative or quantitative variables. They are normally arranged in rows or columns or in matrix form. ANSCOM's core tech is comprised of four data sets that have nearly identical the first simple descriptive plot on the top left appears to be a appear very different data sets, where two each data set consists of 11 and follow the assumption of normality. The x values are the same for the first The second graph on the top right shows the a non tech demonstrates the importance of the relationship set of data graphic variables before obvious, starting to analyze it is according to a particular type of relationship and it also valid. shows the inadequacy a more of general basic regression in the corresponding for describing the realization would be more appropriate in the third graph on the bottom left the distribution is linear but should have a different regression line and a robust regression would have been called for the calculated regression is offset by one outlier which exerts enough influence to lower the correlation coefficient from 1 to 0 0.816. Finally, the fourth graph on the bottom right shows an example where one outlier is enough to produce a high correlation coefficient, even though the other data points do not indicate any relationship between the variables. This slide shows some of the reasons why data visualization is important. An ideal visualization will contain only a single image to optimize efficiency, which is the speed at which the observer can extract information. Ultimately, this is about supporting faster, more informed decision making and identifying patterns that would otherwise go undetected in text-based data. Data visualization goes beyond just the standard charts and graphs in Excel to things like infographics, maps, spark lines, detailed bar, pie charts, and time series charts. The next three slides show examples of data visualization. So again, data visualization is intended to inform. It is optimal for seeing the big picture, for rapidly comparing values, for seeing patterns among values, and for comparing patterns across multiple sets. Graphs slash charts, maps, and tables are the three main tools for presenting data. Graphs are a visual representation of the relationship between variables. A chart is a graphical representation of data in which the data is represented by symbols such as bars in a bar chart, lines in a line graph, or slices in a pie chart. A table visualization lets you display data from a metric set using a tabular view. A table is also known as a data grid or a data table. Tables provide comprehensive overviews of every part of the data, including relevant combinations of health indicators and equity stratifiers. One advantage to tables is that the values are stated explicitly. However, a disadvantage is that they require a certain degree of effort from the reader to derive conclusions. Tables may be made easier to interpret by highlighting, color coding, and bolding. A few tips on tables. Use long tables rather than wide tables so that your tables can be viewed properly on electronic devices. If you're using Word, always create tables using Word's table format. Number tables sequentially per chapter and in the order of their appearance. Also make sure that each table has a caption. Note that you can add captions in plots or charts created using data processing software such as Excel or MATLAB. But when you're adding a figure in your manuscript or report, you need to add a caption with specific fonts and the sizes below or above the figure. 
There are four measurement scales or types of data, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. These are simply ways to categorize different types of variables. Nominal scales are used for labeling variables without any quantitative value. Nominal scales can simply be called labels. Examples of a nominal scale include ID numbers, eye color, and zip code. With ordinal scales, the order of the values is what's important and significant, but the differences between each one is not really that important. Examples include grades or height. Ordinal is easy to remember because it sounds like order, and that's the key to remember with, that with ordinal scales, it is the order that matters. Interval scales are numeric scales in which we know not only the order, but also the exact difference between the values. A classic example of an interval scale is the Celsius temperature scale, because the difference between each value is the same. For example, the difference between 60 and 50 degrees is a measurable 10 degrees, as is the difference between 80 and 70 degrees. Time is another good example of an interval scale in which the increments are known, consistent, and measurable. Ratio scales are the ultimate nirvana when it comes to measurement scales because they tell us about the order, they tell us about the exact value between units, and they also have an absolute zero which allows for a range of both descriptive and inferential statistics to be applied. Ratio scales provide a wealth of possibilities when it comes to statistical analysis as the variables can be meaningfully added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided. Visual variables, or graphic variables, are the ways in which the symbology or visual appearance of map elements can be controlled. These visual techniques can be used to create a pleasing aesthetic, convey precise geographic information, and create a visual hierarchy that can be understood by the viewer of the map. Jacques Bertin, a French cartographer, identified seven main categories of visual variables position, size, shape, value, color, orientation, and texture. The position of map elements is important in cartography. While absolute location on a map cannot be altered, the position of labels and information can affect the viewer's perception of the map. The size of a label or symbol is how much space it occupies on the map. Size differences are relatively easy to recognize, making it a useful variable. The size of symbols can convey information, such as a quantitative amount of something, or can be used to attract a viewer's attention. Shape references a location of a certain attribute. Different shapes generally correspond with different attributes.
Color is a visual perceptual property corresponding in humans to categories such as red, green, blue, and others. Humans generally perceive three aspects of color. The hue, which is the commonly named colors of the rainbow. Saturation, the intensity of brightness of a color. And value, the lightness or darkness of a color. As an aspect of color, value refers to how light or dark an object appears on a map. Value effectively conveys a feeling of more or less of an ordinal measure. This makes it a very useful form of symbology in thematic maps, especially core path maps. Orientation refers to the direction labels and symbols are facing on a map. Although it is not as often used as many of the other visual variables, it can be useful for communicating information about real-world orientation of features. Common examples include wind direction and the direction in which a spring flows. Texture refers to the aggregate pattern made up of many individual symbols. For example, a dense network of lines represents streets, and these can be collectively used to convey the concept of an urban area. The next two slides show visual variables in geographic information systems such as ArcMap. Barua palettes are color combinations selected for their special properties for use in data visualization and information design. There are three types of Barua palettes. Qualitative palettes are where the colors do not have a perceived order. Sequential palettes are where the perceived order and perceived difference between successive colors is uniform. And diverging palettes are those where two back-to-back -back sequential palettes start with a common color. Color blindness or color vision deficiency affects around 1 in 12 men and 1 in 200 women worldwide. The bottom figure shows the mapping of different colors to six different grades of each of the two hues seen by those with the red-green color blindness. It offers more distinct options than the seven color palette above. You shouldn't rely on color alone to convey a message. For example, certain types of color blindness make it difficult or even impossible to see common red error messages. One approach is to use both colors and symbols. A thematic map, more formally known as a choropath map, is a type of map specifically designed to show a particular theme connected with a specific geographic area. These maps generally use graded colored series to symbolize classes of information. To present nominal slash qualitative data, which are unorderable and non-numerical, the color variation should not present a pattern and should be totally random. To present sequential data, like counts by certain characteristics, it is best to use shades of a single color. For diverging data, which oscillate around a certain standardized value, it is best to use two diverging colors with a neutral mid-range shade. So why think about this? As an analyst, you should follow as many perception-based design principles as possible when making graphs during exploratory data analysis. Good visualizations can help you make sense of the data and spot patterns, trends, and exceptions with the least effort. You can ensure you'll spot things that would otherwise be hidden or difficult to perceive. This slide gives you a flavor for the different types of maps. A scatter plot is a type of plot or mathematical diagram using Cartesian coordinates to display values for typically two variables for a set of data. As shown in the third or fourth plots, if the points are color-coded, i.e. they're given a shape, additional variables can be displayed. A generalized scatter plot matrix offers a range of displays of paired combinations of categorical and quantitative variables. Scatter plot matrices are a great way to roughly determine if there is a linear correlation between multiple variables. A tree map is a space-constrained visualization of hierarchical structures. It is a very effective way of showing attributes of leaf nodes using size and color coding. These maps have a small aspect ratio, ideally close to 1. 
Tree maps enable users to compare nodes and subtrees, even at varying depths in the tree, and help them spot patterns and exceptions. Bubble maps are good for comparing proportions over geographic regions without the issues caused by regional area size, such as those seen in Coropeth maps. A heat map is a geographic representation of data where the individual values contained in a matrix are represented as colors. The box plot, otherwise known as a box and whisker diagram, is a standardized way of displaying the distribution of data based on the five number summary. The minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. Box plots can be drawn either horizontally or vertically and receive their name from the box in the middle. A radar chart is a graphical method of displaying multivariate data in the form of a two-dimensional chart of three or more quantitative variables represented on axes starting at the same point. Each variable is provided with an axis that starts from the center. The relative position and angle of the axes is typically uninformative. Radar charts are useful for seeing which variables are scoring high or low within the data set, making them ideal for displaying performance. The world of mapping and presenting data sets through geographical representations is no longer relegated to only GIS analysts and highly trained technologists. There are now free and open source applications that make it possible to create complex and robust data visualizations in the form of maps that display statistics and poll results. This illustration shows a typical workflow that uses tall arrays to analyze a large data set. Data acquisition is the process of getting data. This data acquisition can be from your own sensors or from websites maintained by NOAA, NASA, and from any other sources. The format of the data depends on the source of the data. Data parsing is the process of breaking data into smaller chunks by following a set of rules so that the data can be more easily interpreted, managed, or transmitted by a computer. Spreadsheet programs, for example, parse data to fit into a cell of a certain size. Parsing can be done in natural language, computer language, or data structures. Data mining is the process used by companies to turn raw data into useful information. Filtering data in a spreadsheet means to set conditions so that only certain data are displayed. Filtering is done to make it easier to focus on specific information in a large data set or a table of data. To represent data means to create a basic visual model, such as a map. We refine data to make it better for presentation. This slide shows the best practices for understanding quantitative data. The next two slides show the eight types of quantitative messages that users may attempt to understand or communicate from a set of data and the associated graphs used to help communicate the message. Basic data visualization can be done in Excel. For example, you can create a chart by going to the Insert and then selecting the Chart option. Let's move on to the do's and don'ts for data visualization. First, use nice increments between the labels and the scales. Optimize the distance between labels and the axis by not having too many tick labels. Pick an axis range that fits closely to the data in doing so, you minimize unused space. Avoid white space asymmetry by keeping equal padding below and above the data. Remove insignificant digits from axis labels. The axis on a bar graph must start at zero because we perceive the differences between the bar heights as proportional. If for some reason this is not the case, do add notation to show why the bar graph does not begin at zero. A study showed that animation of a 2D data set, which added a time dimension through animation, was liked by users for data viewing and helped with chunking, interpreting, expectations, comparisons, and focusing and filtering. However, this addition of animation was not favored for grasping the whole or statistically analyzing the data. This slide shows some of the software that is available for data visualization. Data science is an interdisciplinary field that uses scientific methods, processes, algorithms, and systems to extract knowledge and insights from data in various forms, both structured and unstructured, similar to data mining. 
It is a concept to unify statistics, data analysis, machine learning, and their related methods to understand and analyze actual phenomena using data. Data science employs techniques and theories drawn from many fields within the context of mathematics, statistics, information science, and computer science. Here is a list of resources that you can use to learn more about data visualization and data science. So to summarize, the benefits of data visualization include that it allows users to see several different perspectives of the data. It makes it possible to interpret vast amounts of data. It also offers the ability to note exceptions in the data and allows users to analyze visual patterns in the data. Exploring trends within a database through visualization also lets analysts navigate through data and visually orient themselves to patterns in the data. Data presentation architecture is a skill set that seeks to identify, locate, manipulate, format, and present data in such a way as to optimally communicate meaning and proper knowledge. DBA has two main objectives, to use the data to provide knowledge in the most efficient manner possible, and to use the data to provide knowledge in the most effective manner possible. If you have any questions on this module, please contact Dr. Tarendra Lakankar.